Right. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this week's Pivot Artist interview. We're talking to Bahe Whitethorn Sr., and we're very excited to hear more about his art and um, about his background. So thank you Hello. so much for chatting with us today. It's honestly an honor to be able to talk to you since I think we know some of your pieces quite well and have been able to um, have them in our collection from some of your supporters from over the years who've donated to us. Um, I'll just jump right into questions. How did you first join the Pivot Show? Well, uh, I think I was invited by well, most of the uh, kids that you see in the exhibit, you know, are, I call them kids because I've known them as kids, you know, they were little once with my, uh, my son, Junior, buddy, and uh, it's a group of artists, young artists that, uh, you know, wanted to pursue uh, an art career, you know. They weren't sure at first, but then uh, it, it was good to see that they were able to to do for themselves, you know, uh, compile the uh, or, or gather up uh, enough of themselves to to put up an exhibit, you know, on their own without any uh, uh, guidance. I think they've learned. I mean, that's kind of uh, the 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 stance that you take as an artist and individual, you sort of pick up and lay, lay, lay out your calendar and schedule and then also follow your instinct, you know, I'll do this and see what happens, you know, and then you, uh, sort of, uh, harvest the, uh, the, the fruits, you know, that's, that's your efforts, you know, you put in the time, you put in the, uh, you spend the time working and, 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 and having to, to uh, decide for yourself what you want to do in life. You know? So it was good to see them do it. And then they invited me uh, mm -hmm. to be a part and work with them. And I, I saw the potential, I saw the, the energy that was behind it. So I thought, hey, you know, might as well. Uh, uh, work with them. I have a few uh, of my own mentors in my life that sort of asked me every now and then what I was doing or if there was more and they sort of mentioned there was more to the pie than just making it, you know. Mm -hmm. So that was my invite, you know, to, to, to participate with a group of young people that, that I knew as kids. I think it's really cool, especially from our perspective with the collections at the Center of Southwest Studies in Fort Lewis College, to see that bridge, to see you and Neil David Sr. and Beverly Blacksheep, and then all of these uh, up and coming artists. And, and so it's a really nice blend. Um, yeah. Kind of a follow up I mean, to I that. Saw, I really enjoyed the show myself, you know. It's beautiful. Yeah, I think yeah, I, I'm uh, sort of visualizing what that exhibit looks like there, you know. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll get you and, here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what's the schedule? The show is going to be Earth? open until next March. So there's time. Oh. And yeah. um, we're doing by appointment follow campus and safety guidelines. And I know you were supposed to come up maybe this summer and work with some yeah. folks in the education department. So hopefully we can reschedule and get you back on campus. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, kind of a follow-up question, Bahe. Sorry, I'm interrupting okay. you here. Um, Dwayne and Landis, you know, they have their vision of what pivot means going between the traditional world and the contemporary uh, environment that that all of you are in today. Uh, what does pivot mean to you? I uh, have to see what they uh, envision, I guess. Mm -hmm. what, what their thoughts are to, to, to see what, uh, 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 how they see it, you know. I mean, I don't, uh, all I know is 
they're really enjoying uh, uh, pursuing their 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 ambition and 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 working hard to put it on, you know. Mm -hmm. So, what is their vision? I mean, I would like to see, you know. Uh, I think I don't. I've never heard of the, the pivot idea. The pivot uh, understanding before I even got invited into the show. So I guess uh, if you can uh, yeah. give me an idea of what their goals are, I, I sure, certainly would, uh, you know, have. It's, it's interesting to hear them talk about it because I think the pivot idea is on so many levels. Like they have it with the skateboard deck, like that actually being the medium that you guys are working from and that having that kind of uniform design is one element of it and using kind of a more modern or not so traditional canvas and using mm -hmm. that and taking that to be a more elevated art piece, I think is one element of it that they talk about. And then as Liz mentioned, um, pivoting like in someone's personal journey um, of being potentially on one path and then being able to make little switches throughout your life. I know that's something that Dwayne talks mm -hmm. about from his past. And then another element of pivot is um, that we've heard from other artists is possibly, you know, growing up, um, say on the reservation and then having to shift say like when they were in college, I'm thinking of some of the artists we've talked in particular, um, to move to a city and thinking about the shifts every day between like the traditional and the modern. So I think it's on a, a bunch of different levels and they leave it pretty open-ended oh, okay. for the artists to take on. And I think um, even our audience and our visitors have had kind of different emotional connections to pivot and can like see it in their lives. And I think even with you know, COVID-19 and all the stuff going on right now, we've had to pivot to change this exhibit and some of the ways that we've um, marketed sure. it or gotten in touch with all of the artists and our audience. So it's, it's just interesting. And I think they leave it pretty open-ended and like to hear the variation of how it means different things oh, okay. to different people. Okay, well, uh, I guess, uh what um as as coming off the res you uh are confronted with many many uh obstacles many uh uh my grandfather used to say there's 380 360 degrees directions you can go you know you can go any direction and be somewhere you can cross or climb any hill or any mountain if, if you choose to you know those are there for you you know and you're 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 not just a, 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 a on a plane where where everything's flat you know you everything has a way or finds you a way to to pivot you know you have to mm -hmm. change direction you have to now find new resources. You have to express yourself uh, uh, not only one way, but uh, there's art is uh, uh, a place that you can do anything you want, the way you want, when you want, why, and 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 do it, you know, the way you want to without any. Uh, hesitation, uh, pivoting, uh, anytime you have a chance to pivot anytime, you, you know, bounce anytime, any direction. I mean, if you look at my artwork, it's not uh, what is, I think I always had a problem with uh, uh, the, the standards of Santa Fe, you know, how they label and how, what is traditional what is non-traditional, what is Navajo, and what is Native, what is, you know. <laughs> and I always had a problem with that, you know, why Why should uh, we have the labeling to, to, 
give us a, a direction or where does it, uh, why do we have to place ourselves in a situation where we're uncomfortable, you know? Mm -hmm. Tradition uh, is what we grew up with and what we know as everyday life, you know? But then you can use it in a, in a parallel world. You can pivot to the Western influence real easy. You have two places to balance there. And then you have uh, the rest of the world. You know, every culture has its, its, its unique way of communicating, you know. So expression uh, and, and uh, in values of uh, what is tradition and, 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 and culturally oriented uh, ideas. You can, you can always uh, uh, use it in a way that uh, you choose to, you know. It's just yeah. like taking a piece of wire and bending it every so often to, uh, uh, to form an, uh, an object, you know. Uh, uh, um, so as, as a kid, I mean, from boarding school to high school to, I think, college, I mean, I realized the world is bigger than what is the res, you know, the heels on the res, <laughs> you know. I think as a kid, I used to watch, I think, uh, airplanes in the sky from the top of a hill. And I used to wonder what it was, and I used to wonder what was in it, you know, who was in it. And then I've been there, you know, I've, I've placed, I found myself flying and looking down to the hills that I used to, uh, 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 play on top and watch airplanes, you know. And uh, I guess it, it, it's good to see uh, there's no, uh, uh, no, 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 uh, really no, uh, what do you call it, no obstacles or no restrictions as far mm -hmm. as pivoting, you know, for them. They can put it on yeah. their art on anything, you know. They can put it on uh, 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 deer hide or whatever you know is 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 you know as far as material or or a surface or I mean I'm open to to, to seeing more you know mm -hmm. let's see what else we can do you know to to change and that art does change you you have to have change and you have to have growth. And you have to have uh, uh, um, uh, obstacles to to, to 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 change, you know. Yeah, yeah, like that kind of spurs creativity and shows how limitless a lot of the possibilities are. Like you said, um, kind of pivoting in our interview. How did how did you first get into art? How did I get it? Well. Uh, I guess uh, just being around what is art, you know, like mm -hmm. my father, my grandfather, my father, uh, my mother and, and, and family did, uh, uh, if you take a, uh, as far traditional, not more traditional part of pottery, mm -hmm. uh, uh, every name in the book, of a pottery book, they're all related to me, you know, they're, they're family. And then also uh, uh, weavers, you know, there's tons of uh, weavers in my family. And uh, now we have abundance of artists, you know. Uh, and, and, and as a kid, uh, I was always fascinated with a line, you know, what I could do a line, what I could do with a line, you know, was a line drawing or just taking, just the fact, you know, just uh, the question on what, I can't even draw a line, you know. That sort of got me on a path of what I could do with a line, you know. I could take a line and, and, and just draw and draw and never stop, you know. Mm -hmm. And the, the drawing would be so complex at the end, just because 
uh, one line, straight line becomes it. Uh, 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 you, you, there's boredom, you know, you, you're doing a straight line, all of a sudden you just sort of put bumps here and there and you have trees and you have like, you know, it's just one continuous line, you know, that circles the world, you know, that, that's been my fascination, you know, I see everything in lines. Like right now, your face is a line drawing. <laughs> <laughs> And your faces of the pixels of the, of the TV is mm -hmm. a line drawing. Mm -hmm. So everything is, you know, has to do with it. So that's all, I was always fascinated by that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to jump around a little bit, but I, mm -hmm. I did want to ask you, so we are lucky enough to have a number of your pieces in our collection, um, thanks to the donation of Bill and Sue Hensler, and yeah. um, we've been, we've had contact with local schools and we've taken your pieces particularly well to local elementary schools and also use them in teaching uh, college students. And it's been really great, people react. They're so excited to see artwork in person, not just on a projection screen or on a computer screen. Yeah. Um, and so it's been very exciting to take your pieces and share them with people. Um, but one of the things that they love is the, your kind of continuous symbols, your your folding chair and some of those other things that you, you work into yeah. many, not all of your pieces, but many. And we were wondering if you could talk a little about that and a little bit of um, how you developed your style, so. Well, uh, style. Uh things in my artwork. Well, these are things that I grew up with, things that I'm familiar with, things that I've, uh, the two water barrels, the, the hoses, the chair, mm -hmm. uh, some of the, the uh, 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 arbors and corrals and things. This is uh, 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 illustrations of my upbringing, my birthplace. The yellow hogan that appears in all my paintings, the chairs. I mean, that's it's part of my life. It's just something that I sort of pushed around or, or had a hand at moving or, or the water barrels. I had a chance to take, take it to the white bucket that you see in the pictures and filling it with water, you know, the siphoning hose. A lot of these things are elements in my life, you know, something that is, that tells a story of what, what is uh, the understanding and the view of, of, of Bahi Whitethorn, you know, uh, how he sort of, uh, how, uh, I think a, a bush, a sagebrush, mm -hmm. how important it was to play around a sagebrush, you know, the twigs and the, the coloration from the sun, you know, it's something that I enjoyed, you know, that I put on paper. And then the style is, um, like I said, a line. So if you look at my uh, uh, drawings and compositions, it has lines, edges, you know, and it's like a puzzle if you, if you, sort of squint at it a little bit, it's like a puzzle, you know, you, you dark colors versus uh, uh, bright colors and warm colors, cold colors, and lines sort of give you the three dimensional movement, you know, so looking at and, and expressing the, uh, the movement and what is in nature, you know, the actual line movement and color movement and how light bounces in nature, you know, that's, that's my, uh, um, it's a combination of, uh, 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 I guess if you look at the history of art, you, you, you have generations and, and hundreds of years of art that's been done. So you end up uh, liking certain styles over the years, you know, you, you see, you take to, let's say Van Gogh versus, uh, 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 Gerald Naylor or, you know, some native artists, Ellen Hauser and, and uh, 
uh, uh, some of, you know, individuals in the world that express themselves in color and lines, sort of taking pieces of, of everybody's artwork mm -hmm. and, and imitating what they did, I guess, at one time. How Alan Howes drew his horses, how Alan Howes did his sculptures, how uh, Robert Draper did his watercolors, and, and all of these things uh, 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 sort of found a place in my work, you know, and the comic books. When I was a kid, I, I used to uh, like to read comic books and I had tons of them, you know. The two barrels that you see in the, in the paintings. Mm -hmm. At one time I had a barrel full of comic books, you know. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> so I love that. <laughs> <laughs> So a lot of the, the colors and compositions of how they're done, the illustration, how they're done, you know, it's kind of my portrayal of, of putting it all together in one place, you know? I can really see that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah all those influences and just how they come together. And I know, like Liz said, we get to take those to, especially elementary school students who are learning well, I think their lesson is about like depth of field and yeah. just seeing all of the different elements and having in our collection just such a wide variety where like we can tell it's a Bahe Whiteborn piece, but all of the different types of elements in them are in some different variation. And so I know that the students really love those and really react well to seeing, you know, like you said, those familiar items from your childhood that they can actually mm -hmm. recognize and I think feel very inspired from and can see things in their life that they'd be able to kind of replicate and feel inspired to do that themselves. So yes, we're so lucky to be able to do that. A personal, it brings a personal element that, that the students connect with. And, and we're also uh, lucky enough to have some of your children's books. So we're excited about that. Yes. We get to share that to you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes, I, I try to pay attention to what is, what would be important to our younger people, you know, mm -hmm. as far as uh, what they can do for themselves in stories and in school and, and also expressing themselves on, on a, a plain canvas or paper, you know, how they can, uh, uh, how little, how how much they can do with a simple line, with simple colors and shapes, you know. Yeah, and I think hearing that is important for, especially you know, younger elementary school, but even for people my age, because it seems like you know when we see the whole of an art piece, not having had that kind of training, it's hard to think of it in those simple terms, but. It's exciting to think that like those yeah. are things that people can start to see and start to recognize in art and then be able to project for themselves. So yeah. Yeah. The other Thank thing you. I concentrate yeah. is on color. Mm -hmm. How how the primary color is red, yellow, and blue, and how you can uh, mix them, how you can tell your story what just by those three colors. So if you look at my paintings, that sort of gives you, you can see the yellow, the red, and the blue, you know. The darkest line is the, the darkest navy blue that I can make from those colors. Yeah. So. And in our gallery, I know that your pieces have drawn a lot of attention because of those bright colors. And I think I, I really am excited to hopefully have you visit us at the center at some point and Fort Lewis College to be able to see the exhibit. Um, so thank you for chatting with us today. Let me do some shout outs for some of our sponsors who helped support us financially to get the show to Fort Lewis and the Center of Southwest Studies. There's the LPEA Roundup grant folks, the crowdfunding donors, um, Richard and Marilyn Valentine, the Colorado Humanities Cares Grant, and the National Endowment for the Humanities. Um, for our viewers, you can follow Bahe on Instagram, and I'll have all of the links 
when we post this and check okay. out his website. I'll link those as well. And then um, for our viewers, as always, you can follow Pivot on Instagram and us at the center on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Um, Bahe, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. Sure, you're welcome. Uh, anytime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think yeah. I have, I should have, or I have uh, family that had gone to Fort, Fort Lewis College, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it's a, it's a good school, I understand, and it's wonderful, wonderful to, to, to see that the tuition is not a big problem or anything for our people. Mm -hmm. And I, I thank yeah. you all for that. And, and uh, uh, I think one of my grandkids is looking forward to, you know, signing on at the school, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, exciting. We love hearing that because it's, it's been interesting with the show how many connections the artists or anybody has to Fort Lewis because it is such an integral part of so many people's lives and so yeah that'd be exciting and if they do please send them our way and we'd love to you know show them that we have your work in our collection and just that we have resources available for the whole Fort Lewis campus too. And that's part of why we're so excited to have Pivot at the center and excited to have your work in our collection so we're really glad to talk to you today. Sure, I appreciate what Bill and Sue has has done yes. to, to give me the uh, the uh, the statue at the school. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, uh, they've been longtime friends and followers of my work and collectors of my work, mm -hmm. and I really do have uh, a, a certain love for them. Mm -hmm. And they're like family. I've stayed at their house, their Hogan, so. Mm -hmm. Quite familiar with uh, with with them, so I appreciate them very well. Yeah, and we're so lucky to have them as our donors, since you know the foundation of our arts collection, our contemporary Native art collection, is from them, and we've been able to bring students on field trips to their house, and just having their knowledge, and like you said, they're like family, and they they know yeah. so much, so so much of the background and some of the stories, and can tell us so much more about the art than just seeing the art as like a 2D thing. It really yes. brings it to life. Yes, personal connections. We're lucky to have connections to you and we're really lucky for their donations and we're hoping to share more of it with the world, you know, all the time, so. Yeah, so we'll let you get yeah, back so. to your, yeah, we'll let you get back to your day and thank you for chatting with us. Feel free to reach out to us anytime. I know you have Liz's number okay. now and we'd love to, hear from you again and work with you and connect more yes okay all right yeah and so i love that care. piece behind you too so i'm just an eye <laughs> oh, <okay. the> whole time. <laughs>